Hello everybody, my name is Farrah and I'm going to be reviewing 1931 Fritz Lang film called M. Um, let me first start off by saying that when I picked this movie, I really, really, really did it with the want to see what everybody else's opinion of this movie was, because this is one of my favorite films of all time. I've always loved, like, crime, noir, um, black and white films, and, like, this character, um, M, played by Peter Lorre, is just, like, the, the way that, um, the characters follow throughout the film, and it's not, like, one of the things where you're kind of, like, say, they're trying to figure out who is the killer in this movie. It's more of, like, you already know who the killer is in this story. They really, like, start off, you know, by kind of pointing out to you Peter Lorre is indeed this child killer, which people, uh, like the police and everybody are trying to look for in this hectic frenzy in Berlin in 1931. And what's really cool about that is that, like, just following this character and getting to see his habits, like, see how he hunts his prey, it's, it's almost like, almost unseen. It's really, um, it, it's an awesome way of approaching the film. Um, one of the things that I really, really like, uh, <laughs> let me start off by saying I loved everybody's reviews, um, and a couple of things that I, um, that, that, that really, really, uh, rung true for me is, um, do not take it seriously pointed out that, uh, Otto, Otto Warnick's character as the inspector who's actually trying to come after Peter Lohr, he is, he's extraordinarily anal, and like a, a meticulous, meticulous inspector who really like points out and like notices all these different things um, about like different people. Like if you like, fuck, if, if there was like the tiniest semblance of reason for him to think that you uh, should be like questioned, he'll question you. This guy. Like, it's almost like he's, like, sitting there, uh, and it's almost like that show Lie to Me, um, where the, uh, the face reader is basically just, like, he can actually point out when people are lying to him. This auto warning character, uh, as the inspector is just, he's really, really intense. And why I liked that Do Not Take It Seriously brought that up is because before I listened to her interpretation of Otto Warnick, I really was not giving too much, um, <laughs> too much respect or regard to the police in the movie. Um, it, it, it kind of like, the, the police seem almost like hopeless. There's this overlying hopeless feeling that they're not going to be able to find this guy. They keep on bringing up the different inspectors that they, they don't, they don't think they're going to find this character. And it really sets up this, like, this, this awful, hopeless feeling that even though they have this character, Otto Wernick, um, who is, he's really, really good, he's a really good inspector character, that it sets up this really intense feeling that they're not going to be able to get this creepy, creepy guy who is kidnapping, or not, well, he's not even kidnapping, he is, uh, he's a, like a child molester and he's a killer, and that sets up, um, like the, the kind of like role, role reversal that the, the underground, the, uh, the crime element of Berlin band together, uh, and try to come after, uh, M, who is this nasty, nasty, nasty killer. And, you know, not, <laughs> it's strange because, like, I, there's one thing I don't like, um, is that, when the people are discussing, they, they have this, like, little round table of all the crime element of Berlin talking to each other and, like, how they're going to, like, stop this guy. Uh, it seems like they're more motivated uh, by the fact that the police are getting really paranoid and they're getting helpless. Uh, they have this hopelessness that's in them is, like, causing them to basically like, follow up the slightest lead of who this random child molester and killer is, and they end up uh, raiding all of their businesses. Basically, it seems like the way that Fritz Lang set up the um, the story is that it's, like, they, they seem to be more motivated by business than uh, the morality. Um, at the same time, not to say that that's... At, at, by the end of the movie, there's a lot more to it. Uh, there's this kind of the, the, one of the gang leaders, like, 
I'm going to spoil quite a bit right now, but the gang leader that actually does, um, uh, th that's kind of like <laughs> the the runner of the show, uh, when they're sitting there and they found Peter Lorre's character, they found M, the, the killer, um, the, he, he brings out, like, all of this, like, kind of, like, pent-up rage and uh, anger towards basically what they see as a monster, a killer of children who can't be stopped. And that, that that's kind of like, it's a very one-sided, like, when they go into it, when they capture Pierre Laurie, and they're, like, all, like, basically... The, entire crime element of Berlin is kind of like crashing down upon him, you know, there's this awesome, awesome, awesome speech of which every single person on this channel has talked about, where Peter Laurie is simply saying that I'm compelled to do this, it's almost like, wait, 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 stop, stop. This goes from being an extraordinarily simplistic film in which there is just like, this guy's evil, we gotta stop him. Peter Lorre comes out with this speech about how he's compelled to do what he does. He's not a monster, he's a human being, he is a... Uh, but if he can't stop doing this, and he actually draws a connection between him and the rest of the mob, in that he says that it feels like there's a shadow that's following himself. That's really, really cool. It, it feels like he's, like... <laughs> he he's compelled to do this, but after he's done it, he's horrified by what he's done because he reads the papers and he finds out like what he's done, and it's just like whoa, it's mind blowing to him. And like that speech is so important because it feels like there's this like landslide that is just like there's only like one possible outcome, and then. Bam! Pierre Lord knocks it out of the fucking park with a speech that really like makes you stop, like stop your like train of thought and just be quiet and listen to the possibility that this guy is a lot more than he seems. Um, <laughs> now the one inconsistency I have with this film, Lucian Geek brought up a good point. Um, it, it, uh, in that um, Pierre Laurie's character, he looks kind of like a cartoon, and that he could, like, attract children, because he's, like, you know, kind of cartoonish, he's fat, he's, you know, he, he, he bulgy eyes and all of that, but on the, on the, uh, that reigns extraordinarily true, he, he does look like a cartoon, it's, it's a fucking brilliant an analyzation of what he looks like, but to me, another inconsistency is that all, all the police are cracking, and, like, cracking down, and, like, finding all these different possible suspects, and right there in the middle of the crowd is Peter Laurie, who is probably one of, visually, one of the scariest looking fuckers you've ever seen. Like, he's got these bulged out eyes, and he's just like, if he entered a room and that, like, there was someone, something in the paper saying that someone was killed, it's just like, you know, I think it's gonna be that guy. <laughs> I mean, no offense, like, it's such a shallow thing for me to say, but <sighs> Pierre Laurie's fucking scary looking. He's really, really scary looking, and to me, it seems like an inconsistency that, you know, <sighs> it's so fucking rotten. I feel rotten saying this. It's an inconsistency that he... He is one of the scariest looking actors I've seen in all of film, yet he's not like, I I'm so surprised that he's not like fingered sooner, like that no one pointed him out sooner because everybody's getting cracked down except Peter Lorre until he makes one of the smallest, smallest mistakes. It's just, it's one of the most chance things in the world that someone uh, who sold him a balloon actually recognizes whistling. It's just, it's one of the chances thing in the world that gets caught, and at the same time, this very, I know, I can't get off this, I feel, I, I continue to feel terrible saying this, because I love Peter Laurie to death, but Peter Laurie, his character is just so fucking scary, <laughs> like, not even his character, him as physically as a human being, like, he, he plays a slime ball in movies really, really well, and he has the physical attributes of, like, one of the scariest fucking faces on the earth to actually pull that off, and I just thought it was kind of an inconsistency that, like, they didn't point it out sooner. Regardless of that, though, this film, you'll draw a 
billion parallels, like, to all these different moves. Fuck, like, when I was watching it, I was, like, thinking to myself, hmm, the crime element in this actually kind of reminds me of the Dark Knight and how they were, like, trying to find the vigilante Batman, you know. Of course, like, the vigilante in this case would be, uh, would be M, it would be Peter Lorre, the, the child killer rapist, but at the same time, this crime element trying to come after him, it just, like, these cool parallels between all these different movies from different genres, like, though they are both kind of, yeah, they're both crime movies, even though it is a superhero movie, it's one of those movies where it's so good that you just can't stop bringing up into your mind, oh, it reminds me of this movie, this movie, this movie, this movie, you know, if you got the time to check out M, check out M, because M is like one of my favorite movies because it's it's dark, it's brooding. I mean, this is for one of the like one of the oldest movies that I find to be like one of my favorite movies. It's also one of the most intensely scary. It's a scary, scary, very. I'm not going to say that this is a violent movie, because as Do Not Take It Seriously brought up, you never get to see any of the violence that's happening on screen. All you can do is get to hear about it, which actually gives you, like, a sort of, like, a tension. Like, oh, God. You know, it's, it's making you think more and more about what's possibly happening behind the scenes. Um, but its subject matter is fucking grisly. This is a really, really, really dark movie. And if you get the chance, see this movie, because it is fucking awesome. Um, I loved all of your guys' reviews. Um, two huge thumbs up for everybody's review. Um, I, I, I actually, like, I feel weird saying this, but it's... This was me more trying to, like, see everybody else's review because I was excited. I was like a little kid in front of a candy store. Hopefully, Peter Lorre was not outside that candy store, too. But I was more excited to, like, find out what people thought about this movie because it's just, it's film going heaven. Um, yeah. M. 1931 movie. Fucking awesome. Two huge thumbs up. Go check it out. Peace.